So in the previous video I set you a few questions on differentiation and trig functions. What I'm going to do in this video, we're going to go over those questions, work you through the solutions and see how you got on. Quick refresher for you, these were the questions that I set. So a few there, calculating the derivatives of, so first was 6 sin x, then negative 4 cos x, 2 cos of 3x plus 1, and the last one was negative 2 sin of a half x minus 2. And then an application style question, what is the gradient of the line y? It was 2 sin x plus cos x when x is equal to pi over 4. So we had to calculate those. So here you go. First one, f of x equals 6 sin x. Now remember, derivative of sine is cos, derivative of cos is minus sine. Keep that in mind. Taking these, we just have to do it straight up like that. Now if there's a coefficient, start by writing that down. So in this case, it'd be 6. And then I look at the derivative of this part. So sin x, remember, goes to cos. So it's 6 times cos x. So derivative of 6 sin x is just simply 6 cos x. Nice and straightforward. Similar steps for this one here. So f of x equals negative 4 cos x. Just have to remember, derivative of cos is minus sin. So we can write down our coefficient and then write down our derivative. So cos goes to minus sin. So it's negative 4 times negative sin x. Simplify it then from that. Negative 4 times negative sin x. Two negatives cancel. And I get 4 sin x. So there's the derivative of that. Fairly straightforward if you just remember the rule. Cos goes to minus sine, sine goes to cos. Third one, y equals 2 cos of 3x plus 1. Now bringing this into play, remember, we had to look at the derivative in here after we'd taken the derivative overall, but it didn't overly complicate the entire set of steps. We just broke it down the exact same way. So dy by dx, because this is a y equals, we write down our coefficient, take derivative of this part, and then we take derivative of this part at the end, and then simplify the whole thing. So derivative of cos is minus sine, so it's 2 times minus sine of 3x plus 1. We then multiply it by the derivative of this part in here. Well, it's a nice simple linear function, 3x plus 1, derivative of that is just 3. We then simplify the whole shebang together. So 2 times 3 is 6, but it's a minus there, so it becomes minus 6 sine of 3x plus 1. It is fairly straightforward when you break it down, just do it stage by stage, step by step, and don't try and do a whole thing in one go and overly complicate it for yourself. Second question here was minus 2 sine of a half x minus 2. Again, same set of steps. f dash dx in this case, coefficient in front, derivative of this, and the derivative of sine is cos, so it's 2 times cos of a half x minus 2, and then it's multiplied by the derivative in here. Well, it's a half x minus 2, a nice little linear function. Derivative is just a half. We then simplify what we've got here, and we get our answer. So it's minus 2 times a half, so it's minus 1, so in this case just minus cos of a half x minus 2. And I've got my derivative there. Remember, we don't have to write minus 1. 1 can just be left off and made it look simple. So that's just simple differentiation. What about when we apply it to something? So what is the gradient of the line y equals 2 sine x plus cos x when x equals pi over 4? Now, when we're thinking of applying it, there are several words that associate instantly or several phrases that associate instantly with differentiation. So gradient, speed, rate of change, things like that all refer to the derivative. So if we see what is the gradient of a line at a point, we have to take the derivative of the equation of the line and then substitute in the point we want. So I've got to take the derivative of this and then substitute in pi over 4. So dy by dx, I want to take the derivative of each term here. So again, derivative of sine is cos, derivative of cos is minus sine. That doesn't change just because it's applying the question to something. 2 sine x becomes 2 cos x and plus cos, take the derivative of that, becomes minus sine x. So I've got to that stage there, 2 cos x minus sine x. Now I know it's when x equals pi over 4, so what I then have to do is substitute in at pi over 4. So I then take dy by dx equals, and wherever there's an x, I put in pi by 4. So I get 2 cos of pi over 4, take away sine of pi over 4. And this is where your exact values all come into play. This is where we have to start remembering nodes. Now remember the triangle with pi over 4 here. This is also pi by 4. 
two sides there are one and one, and our hypotenuse is root two. So exact value of sine and cos of pi over four is one over root two. So that then becomes two times one over root two, take away one over root two. So that's two of the one over root twos, take away a one over root two, that simplifies to one over root two. So my gradient of the line at that point is one over root two. That's how we work questions through like this. We have to make sure we remember this step by step. Breaking down the derivatives of trig functions one step at a time. And if it's an applications question like this, we only think about substituting things in once we've got to that stage and we're ready. Don't try and jump the gun and put it in a bit too early. Don't put it in at the wrong stage. Hope that went well. I will see you all in class.